So today I'm going to review this Fluke 117 multimeter. You may have seen my previous reviews. I do a lot of testing on these things. I put them on a the calibrator, check the accuracy, check the continuity speed, that sort of stuff. We want to be quite thorough. So if you want to see how good these actually are, stick around. If it's your first time here, don't forget to subscribe. And also, if you like these kinds of videos, click like because it helps to show your support and show you like what I'm doing. I also have a playlist of all these multimeter reviews I've been doing, so they will be linked at the end and also down below in the description. So if you expand that, click show more and you read the description, you'll see that I've got a link in there to the playlist as well. And I may even stick a thing up there in the corner. So that place is all the various multimeters I've done reviews on with all this accuracy testing and that sort of stuff all on them. So if you want to see a comparison between different meters to see how they perform, you want to check out that playlist and see which ones I have listed in case it's on your list of things you want. So this is supplied to me at no cost by Fluke, also with assistance of Pomona who arranged for the review. So thank you very much Fluke and Pomona. Some manuals, some leads. Okay, let's get rid of the packaging. We've got some leads which are probably 1.3 meters long, I tend to be. It is often 1.3 meters long and these are PVC leads. They're actually a bit stiff actually. So the last meter I got which had PVC leads with the leads are actually a little bit more flexible. What it is, PVC is made flexible by adding a plasticizer to it. Depending on how much plasticizer that is added into the material, it changes flexibility. You can have them almost like rubber, you know, really, really soft and flexible and you know, you can make gaskets out of and that sort of stuff. Natural PVC is actually quite rigid. This obviously has a slightly lower dose of plasticizer in this one compared to the previous one. Yeah, I mean, PVC leads are okay. They're all right, but if you want decent quality leads, then Pomona and Fluke also sell them. If you want some silicon leads, but uh, these are just basic leads. I mean, all well, these things are rated at it's typical stuff, isn't it? Cat 3, 1000 volts, cat 4, 600 volts, 10 amps. And you've got the little clips on the end as well. Part of the rating system. So you've only got the very tip exposed. So we've got a little quick start guide which tells you how to do some basic measurements. So I'm actually quite surprised this is even in here, this little quick start guide thing, to you how to do issue measurements, because People which buy flukes would generally be people which know what they're doing anyway, or they're in the industry and they have these certain skill sets, generally. So I'm quite surprised that this is a thing in here telling you how to do certain measurements. I mean, if it is like a newbie thing and you know, you need to do multimeters, then absolutely. These are flukes. These are not the low end stuff, which is what newbies would usually get. These are, you know, middle to high range sort of things, you know. I don't know, I'm just surprised that's in there. And also got the typical safety information in various languages and, and basic specs and yeah you know you're not gonna worry about that here's a little thing advertising their tool pack or t-pack hands-free hanger handy things to have actually these hangers so you normally stick your hanger through here which is how this is left on it in the packaging to encourage you to go and buy one um, but hangers are handy things to have you don't need one till you need one and then you th wished that you'd got one man i'm waffling a lot so here you've got an auto voltage low resistance mode here. So that kills off any stray voltages on AC lines like that because it helps drag the line voltage down a little bit. So if you've got any dead lines which are running parallel to a live line, you can actually use this mode and it'll load the circuit down a little bit and actually give you a more accurate voltage reading. Get new parasitic voltages that are floating around. Also does AC and DC on that same mode. Also up over here, voltage with hertz. Uh, AC, DC volts, AC and DC millivolts, resistance, sounder, diode test with capacitance, current with frequency as well, AC and DC current, and DC current, and it's also got a volt alert as well. Buttons, hold, minimax, range also does a low high sensitivity thing as well for the volt alert. It's got a selection here for different modes, backlight. On the back it's got some things in here about buttons to push when you're booting it up. So we've got the disable beeper, disable auto power off, and disable auto backlight off. Pretty much when you're holding down, you turn it on. And this is the mention about the auto voltage. Obviously, it's also got a tilting bow on it as well. So let's set this up so you can see it. Let's do continuity testing. So these are PVC leads, and yes, they are living up to their thing of PVC leads being a bit stiff. So the previous set I got were much more flexible. This one's a bit stiffer. I'm not liking these ones as much. They, can, they tend to hold their shape and they're a bit of a pain. Right. That's pretty fast. Yeah. That is really fast. And it is latching as well. 
So even with these factory leads, with no cleaning, it's really fast. It's basically instant. I'm not sure I can actually make that miss. That's good. Diode mode, does that beep as well? Yes it does. So I've got my other fluke over here. Let's just check the voltage on the diode mode. About 2.5 volts almost. So this thing has this volt alert thing over here. We'll look at that. <laughs> That's detecting my lighting and everything, which is probably about one and a half feet. I don't know, 40, 50 centimeters above it, probably. Probably about 40 centimeters away from it. It's detecting that. Let's do low range. It's about 20 centimeters away. Auto voltage thing. Let's shove these into a power point and see what happens. So let's shove it straight into a main socket here. There you go, 232 volts AC. Check out my power supply over here, which I've got preset. 8 volts DC. There you go. You can switch between AC and DC just fine. No worries whatsoever. We're going to hook this up to my calibrator shortly, so make sure you stick around for that. And that's always interesting, seeing how the accuracy is actually on a calibrator, you know, actual proper calibrator. The calibrator's got accuracy far exceeding the multimeters, so it gives you a really good indication of how good their multimeters actually are, or not, depending on, you know, how it comes out. So I'm going to get my standard capacitors out, we'll chuck those on it, and we'll see how accurate the capacitance is. Right, so let's go to capacitance mode, push that, it's going to go that way up. 200 picofarad, so it doesn't sharpen that one, can't measure that low, okay. Get the test lead, standard spacings of course, put this into a 1 nanofarad capacitor, there we go, 1 nanofarad, you can read that just fine. Let's go a 20 nanofarad. There we go, that's perfect. And we've got one microfarad. Three counts out. So before we go over to the calibrator there, we've got to do the screen peel. Everyone loves a screen peel. Ready? Right, let's get to the calibrator. To the calibrator. So here we are at the calibrator. I'm gonna do the DC volts range first and we'll obviously go through AC volts and resistance and so on as well. One volts, which is what it defaults to. One volt, perfect. One millivolts, perfect. Two millivolts, perfect. One millivolt, perfect. 10 volts, perfect, 100 volts, perfect, <whistles> 500 volts is one count out, okay so the max is 600 volts and that's one count out, can't complain about that. So now we're going to do the millivolt range, so I've got it set to 100 millivolts already and that's perfect. 10 millivolts, perfect. 1 millivolt, perfect. 100 microvolts, perfect. So let's just check the top end of the range. So 50 millivolts is perfect. 500 is perfect. Oh, no, one count out. Okay, 600, one count out. That's pretty good though, one count. So back on the voltage range, 600 millivolts is perfect on this one. So 6 volts. One count out on that range, 60 volts, one count out, and 600 volts as we did already, one count out. So now I'm doing AC volts, so set to one volt right now, one kilohertz. Now the actual specs state one kilohertz as the max frequency, so I expect to see some inaccuracy here. So I'm going to try and overlay the specs down here somewhere or something, so I can squeeze it on screen. But the AC spec is 1% um, plus three counts between 45 and 500 hertz and 2% plus 3 counts between 500 hertz and 1 kilohertz. It's 3 counts out so it's within spec obviously so it's actually pretty well within spec because the percentage is basically being ignored in this point. Let's get down to 100 millivolts. Yeah, is it perfect or is it 1 count out? It's, it's still within, <laughs> within spec. Well, I don't forget this is in the volts range. So 10 millivolts, it can't see it at 1 kilohertz. On the volts range you can't see it. So 10 volts. I'll come back down and do different frequencies in a minute. 
I'm going to go all right, ten, one kilohertz, then I'll do 500, then I'll probably do 50, some of that. So 10 volts is one count out, maybe two, well within spec. 100 volts, four counts out, again, well within spec. And 600 is the max, isn't it? Yes. So 400 volts is out by 17 counts. At one kilohertz, don't forget. 500 volts is out by 21 counts. 600 volts, out by 26 counts. But this is probably because of the frequency. This is where that percentage error is kicking in. The 2% error. Well, there it is. So 500 hertz with 14 counts out. 8 counts out there. I might go back down to a full range scale like that. It's just easier to, to see it. Okay. So you have 2 counts out there. 10 volts. 1 count out there. 1 volt, 1 count out there. 100 millivolts. Perfect. Ooh, barely. 10 millivolts. Still can't see 10 millivolts. That's interesting. Okay, let's go lower. 50 hertz, I still can't see 10 millivolts. That's interesting. Well, I thought I'd be able to do that. 100 millivolts, you can see that. Let's find out what's going on here. 30 is there. 20 is there. 10 is not. Hmm. Don't forget, it is on the volts range, so if you want millivolts, you should really be over here anyway. Let's find it interesting, it's disappearing completely. Yeah, but 18. Let's check the frequency readout so they can measure hertz. So 50 hertz, yeah, that's fine. 500 hertz, that's fine. It can do 5 kilohertz. Maybe it's over here, but. There's a 50 kilohertz. Can't do 500 kilohertz. Okay, you can do 90 kilohertz. I Means you can probably do it up to 100. There you go, 99 kilohertz, you can do that. So, yeah, so 100 kilohertz max. So I do millivolts AC now, so I do 100 millivolts, and that's perfect. 10 millivolts, the mythical 10 millivolts, and that is perfect. 1 millivolt, and it can't see it. Hmm, interesting. At 1 kilohertz. Let's change frequencies. So even at 100 hertz, it still can't see that 1 millivolt reading. That is actually surprising. I would have thought it could read that. So let's go back up to 10 millivolts, which you can see. And we'll bring it down until it loses it. Two. That's about 18 in the other one, wasn't it? Yeah, there we go. Look, 1.8 millivolts is dropping off. So it looks like the bottom end calibration isn't quite right. Hmm. Anyway, okay. So if you want to measure anything less than 2 millivolts, you got a problem. Realistically, is this going to matter? Probably not. So now let's do current measurements. So I've got this set to DC milliamps. Do one milliamp. And I'm seeing one milliamp on the meter here. No problem whatsoever. Let's do 10 milliamps. Fine, it's perfect. 100 milliamps, perfect. One amp. Pretty much perfect. Let's go right to the top. 1.899, so that's one count out. So in this AC range here, it's AC and DC, right? So we can actually see the DC offset at the same time, but only to a point. So I've got 100 milliamps coming out now, and we're seeing 65. So it does tend to roll off. We go down 10 milliamps with that DC offset there. Yeah, it kind of disappears. All right, let's do the AC now. So I'm currently doing 1 milliamp AC, not showing up. Let's do 10 milliamps. That's not showing up either. So 100 hertz, 100 milliamps. That shows up, that's perfect. So one amp, pretty much perfect. One count down, I suppose you could say. That is one count out. So when you turn the dial around away from the current range, it warns you about the leads, but that's about it. This little thing on flicks up on the display. So let's do resistance, check that one out. So I've got my Fluke calibrator here. I'm using this one now. Although the Datron can do it as well. I thought it was just appropriate that I'm using the Fluke 5450A to test the Fluke multimeter. It seems like the right thing to do, doesn't it? I've currently got that set to a short, and if I short on the multimeter itself, you can see it goes down to zero ohms, so that's fine. The error is purely in the leads and the input circuitry of this thing. All right, so that's why you see 0.3 there. 
and if I do two wire conversations, it's obviously going to be a bit closer. So, because you're only obviously doing two wires. So let's do a 1 ohm, give 1.2 ohms versus 1.17, so that's basically right. There you go, 10 ohms, very close, a couple of counts out maybe. When you're doing two wire measurements, it's really hard to actually get a decent measurement from it because of just the nature of it because you're current running through these cables and you get a voltage drop and that sort of stuff so four wire is much more accurate if you're trying to do precision stuff like low low ohms but obviously this is two wire so we have to live with a bit of inaccuracy uh, 100 ohms about one count out or so 1k this is where the lead and stuff starts to become irrelevant and there we are we're getting a much better reading there now that's almost perfect 10k is perfect 100k is perfect, 1 meg is perfect, 10 meg, 10 meg is basically perfect, 100 meg it can't do because it only goes up to 60 meg. Don't forget to click like and subscribe, these things down here. So this has got a rubber bumper on it, we're going to do the tear down now, I'm going to pull the thing apart and have a look inside, check the build quality is like. So rubber bumper, that comes off. Looks a bit different without it, doesn't it? So it's also got this dial here, so I should mention this. It's actually designed, so it's got to cut out on the side there. So you actually hold it one hand and do the meter one-handed whilst obviously probing the other hand. That's quite a nice feature. That's why it's got this textured edge around here. Battery compartment, feels like a metal threaded insert. It is. Oh, there we go. So it's like a little nine volt battery holder. And that will just sit in there and it's Designed so you can't put the battery in backwards, it can only go one way. Okay, yeah, that did kind of have to come out, I think. I probably could have got away with leaving it in actually, but that's fine. But yep, yeah, metal threaded insert. Let's check these screws here, take these out. These are not metal threaded, these are just plastic, plastic screws. You shouldn't have to get inside it unless you blow the fuse, pretty much. So, yeah, if you blow the fuse, yeah, you're doing something wrong, or you're having a bad day. That happens too. Right, let's try and get this out of there. Here we go. So it's got this massive blast shield around the edge here. And this is a nice high ridge, which actually is sandwiched inside this slot here. So it's like triple layered. So that is really strong. That's good. As you'd expect from Fluke, high quality, high safety standards. So let's have a close look at this thing. So you can see the terminals are screwed on. We've got a decent sized fuse here. So decent rating on it. Over here we have a resistor array, laser trim resistor array inside here which looks like it's shielded. My cat's just come to join us. Uh, we've got some PTCs, MOVs, fusible resistor. That's what I interpret that to being anyway. If I'm wrong, let me know. Another MOV over here. Programming header. Some shielding, obviously. Buzzer there. It's got some kind of sensor up there. I'm guessing that's the, um, it does have that non-contact voltage thing. So it could be from that sensor there, maybe. That device, that U5. That's my guess. Do you think they take it right out of the casing? Fine, let's have a look. I've taken those three screws out there. There's another screw here. It's like it's got to come out. Based on the fact it's not moving, I'm guessing it does. Yep, plastic fitted screws. As you'd expect from Fluke, super high quality looking. This is like a left hidden size buzzers here. So it's got this offset. It's got like, is that through hole version of a Service mount version maybe. Nope, another screw down here. Missed that one. Right, managed to get it out. Just took a little persuasion. There's a frame which goes over the display. I was trying to hook it, unhook that thinking maybe it's going to the casing, but it's not. So rub my membrane here for the buttons, as you'd expect. A bit of lubricant in there. Not much, but a little bit. Like a shield here. Interesting. That might mean I didn't need to take those screws out, actually. That looks like, yeah, these two screws here which I took out, I didn't actually need to take those two out because that just holds on that shield there. But there's not really much to see on this side, is there? I'm not going to bother taking that off. That was disappointing, but expected, nothing to see. I should always mention this in case you haven't seen the previous videos. Whenever you're doing a plastic screw like this, don't just drive them straight in. First, go backwards with it so it drops in. Did you hear that? Once it drops in, then put it in. That way you're not cutting any thread each time. It just keeps using the same thread. 
and that way you don't end up destroying the plastic because each time you put the screw in it's going to chew out a bit of plastic so if you always put it back into the same thread you don't have that problem something I didn't cover previously which I probably should do is look at these buttons here so we've got min max and average it actually does so I've got it on DC volts right now so min max and average so you can do measurements and it will you know hold the reading on there for you if you want and also got holding as well and back to auto ranging now when you do min max it only does it within the range it doesn't actually do it in auto ranging all right so that's one thing to consider so I'll do it now it will do it within the range it's currently in. So you see it's got a manual range in 6 volt range. All right, so you have to hold it back again, take it back off, then we can do the ranges manually. And backlight, that works fine. Probably can't see it too well because of my lighting here, but uh, that's working all right. If you've got dim lighting situation, that'll work for you just fine. Again, thank you much Fluke and Pomona for sponsoring the video and giving me this thing for free. Much appreciated. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and check out the playlist at the end where I have all the other multimeter reviews. If you're looking for a multimeter, if you're a hobbyist or not, it doesn't have to be a fluke. I've got other ones as well, but check all those out because it depends on your budget. If you can stretch your fluke, I'd recommend you getting a fluke. If you don't have the budget for a fluke, then that's fine. I've got some other meters there which I've also reviewed which might be suitable for you. There's a playlist here for the multimeter reviews. There's a playlist here that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. There's a subscribe link here if you're not already subscribed and over here is a Patreon support link if you'd like to help support the channel and help me to get more things to review and help more things to fix. Catch you later. Everyone loves a screen peel. Oh.